Dreaming of making it big in real estate, but don't have the cash. Stick around because I'm going to show you how to raise capital for your real estate deals and turn those dreams into reality. I'll tell you right now though, it involves more than just a piggy bank. Hey there, future real estate moguls. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Amanda Rivard, local McKinney, Texas realtor. And today we are chatting about the top strategies to raise capital for real estate deals. Whether you're a newbie or a seasoned investor, these tips will help you secure the funds that you need. Let's get started. But first, you know the drill. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay informed on the real estate that matters. First up, let's talk about the old school methods, traditional financing. Boring and effective, but we've got bank loans. Most people can secure a mortgage or loan from a bank to pick up investment properties. It's an option, but not usually the best because unless it's your homestead, you will be paying a higher interest rate, which will definitely impact your cash flow negatively. For these loans, you also need to have a pretty good credit score and a good debt to income ratio. So these don't work for everyone. Sometimes you also have to have a business plan in place to submit to the bank. Kind of like dating, banks love a good looking credit score and a charming business plan. So you better sweep them off their feet. Next, we have home equity loans or lines of credit. You can use your existing home equity on your homestead property to finance new deals. I've had a lot of clients do this, and if you have a decent amount of equity in your home, this is definitely a solid way to move forward and get the capital to purchase other properties. All right, but what are the risks and benefits? Let's start with the risks. Increased debt. You're adding to your existing debt, which can strain your finances if your income fluctuates or if the property investment doesn't perform as expected. Variable interest rates. HELOCs often have variable rates, meaning your interest payments could increase if market rates rise. Risk of foreclosure. Since your home secures the HELOC, failure to repay the loan could put your primary residence at risk. Nobody wants that. Credit impact. Increased borrowing could affect your credit score if you're unable to manage payments effectively. All right, all right, enough of the negative. Here are the benefits of using a HELOC because you know we all love the benefits. Access to capital. A HELOC provides a flexible source of funds that can be used for down payments or renovations on a new property. Potentially lower interest rates. Compared to other loan types, HELOCs often offer lower interest rates, especially if the rates are currently low, which they're not right now, but still better than some other options. Tax benefits. Interest on a HELOC may be tax deductible depending on how the funds are used and current tax laws. Flexibility. You can draw on the line of credit as needed, allowing you to use more funds efficiently for various stages of your property investment. Next on the list, we've got private money lenders. If you know someone with deep pockets, now's the time to be their new best friend. This is actually a pretty decent option because typically there's already a level of trust built, but if you don't have a homie with lots of cash laying around and you need help sourcing a private money lender, don't hesitate to reach out, I actually know a few. For those in a hurry, we've got hard money loans. Quick, reliable, but with a catch. Hard money loans are great and a lot of my investors utilize them. A reputable company is important, but overall it's a pretty easy process to get approved and they can close the loans very quickly. The caveat, is their high interest rates. Hard money loans are suitable when you know you're going to do a flip that will be easy and quick because the high interest rate, like if you're looking at doing a longer term project, this is probably not the way for you to go. Hard money loans are like the espresso shot of real estate financing. Fast, strong, but not for the faint of heart. If your flip project takes a ton of extra time or the house you're flipping takes a long time to sell. Next up, we have crowdfunding. Because why ask one person for money when you can ask thousands? 
With this option, you'll want to start by researching different real estate crowdfunding platforms. Some popular ones include Fundrise, Realty Mogul, and CrowdStreet. Compare their offerings, fees, minimum investment requirements, and track record. Platforms typically offer equity investments, so owning a share of the property, or debt investments, loaning money to property owners. The best thing to do here is to assess the potential returns and risks of each type to see what aligns with your goals. Last but not least, we've got seller financing, which is convincing the seller to be your financier. I've had this work before quite a few times in the past, especially when the market is not a seller's market and sellers really want to unload their properties. You just wanna make sure that the terms are suitable for both parties, which is the key here. It's kind of like buying a car from a buddy and promising to pay him back eventually. And there you have it, my top strategies to raise capital for real estate deals. Whether you're sweet talking the bank, partnering up, or rallying the crowd, there's a method out there for you. Remember, persistence pays off and sometimes so does your rich uncle. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button, subscribe for more real estate tips, and hit the bell icon to stay updated. Share your favorite capital raising strategies in the comments below. And until the next video, y'all take care.